everyone. It's Madison Link again for another Gym for STEM uh, reading from Rachel Ignofsky's book, Women in Science. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Maria Gopermeyer, theoretical physicist. Maria Gopermeyer worked most of her life for little or no pay. Despite this, she solved one of the great mysteries of the universe. Born in Germany in 1906, she became one of the physics superstars at the University of Göttingen. When her husband, Joe Meyer, received a teaching job at John Hopkins University in the United States, they assumed it would be easy for Maria to also get a job in America. But the Great Depression made jobs scarce, and John Hopkins would not hire the wives of their professors. They let her set up a laboratory in a dusty, abandoned attic. Maria published 10 papers on physics, quantum mechanics, and chemistry. She also co-wrote the chemistry textbook, Statistical Mechanics, used at John Hopkins. For nine years, she worked, taught, and researched without pay. When Joe lost his job, they relocated to Columbia University, where she was seen more as the professor's wife than as a fellow scientist. Her perseverance paid off. During World War II, the U.S. government noticed her skills. She led a small team enriching uranium as part of America's research to create an atomic bomb. After the war, she started her work on isotopes at the Argonne National Library, Laboratory where, while teaching at the University of Chicago. Isotopes happen when the number of neutrons in an atom changes. Some decay quickly, others almost never do. No one knew what made stable isotopes different only that it had something to do with the magic number of neutrons and protons. Maria realized that neutrons and protons rotated in an orbit at different levels. The magic numbers are stable because it is easier for those amounts of protons and neutrons to spin around. She said it was like when you dance with a partner. It takes less energy to spin. Her diagrams look like the layers of an onion. Her proof for this nuclear shell model explained how isotopes behave. In 1960, Maria Gopert Meyer was finally given a full-time job, a full-time paid job as a professor at the University of California. Soon after, in 1963, she was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. So these are the little sayings that are around the drawings that Ignofsky um, did. Won the Nobel Prize in Physics, proved the nuclear shell model for atoms, gave us a better understanding of isotopes. When you love science, all you really want is to keep working. Maria Gopert Meyer. 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, and 126 are the magic numbers for stable isotopes. Learn nuclear physics on the job in Chicago. She thought the isotope mystery was like a jigsaw puzzle. She was the seventh generation of her family to become a professor. Her nickname was Onion Madonna. Was a heavy smoker, often smoking two cigarettes at once, which caused serious health problems later in life. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. We have Grace Hopper, Navy Admiral and computer scientist. Grace Hopper was a Navy Admiral and a relentless trial, trailblazer, recognized as the mother of computer programming. She was born in New York City in 1906 and earned a PhD in mathematics at Yale in 1934. Grace was working as a math professor at Vassar College when the United States entered World War II. In 1943, Grace quit her job to join the Woman Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service, WAVES. Even though she was too small to meet the physical requirements, her mathematical mind was exactly what the country needed. The Navy assigned her to Harvard University to program one of the first ever electronic computers. When Grace saw the Mark I, she thought, gee, that's the prettiest gadget I ever saw. She was second in command to Howard Aiken, one of the original designers of the machine. Back then, calculations were done by a large group of people. This new computer would be able to solve equations that were too complicated for that old system. Grace's team used the Mark I to solve important problems for the war effort, including the implosion equation for the Manhattan Project. After the war, 
Grace joined the private sector. At the time, programmers needed the skills that came with an advanced degree in mathematics and used binary code to program. Grace Ho Hopper thought it would be easier to just talk to a computer in English. Everyone thought that Grace was nuts, but she proved them wrong when she invented the first compiler. This led her to create COBOL, the first universal computer language. Thanks to Grace, just about anyone can learn to code. Grace returned to the Navy in 1967, even after she retired as the oldest person on active duty, just a few more sh months short of turning 80, she continued to lecture, consult, and teach, always reminding the world that the most damaging phrase in the language is, we've always done it that way. So looking at the little sayings, it said, invented the first compiler forever changing how we use computers, created COBOL, the first complex computer language, pioneered the standards for testing computer systems, People are allergic to change. You have to get out and sell the idea. Grace Hopper. Received the Defense Distinguished Service Medal. Had a backwards clock in her office to remind her that things don't have to work just one way. Appeared on the late show with David Letterman and 60 Minutes. Coined the term debugging when a moth got caught into the computer. Her great grandfather was also in the Navy. The Mark I computer was 51 feet wide, had a Jolly Roger pirate flag on her desk because she was relentless in getting what her team needed, famous for her cut wires showing the distance that electric electricity travels in a nanosecond. So I hope you enjoy today's reading and we will be back on Tuesday with another section um, from the Jim for STEM program, reading Rachel Ignofsky's book, Women in Science. We have a great day. Bye.